What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the 250k tournament. So, a lot of the time when I'm talking about myself and my team, I would consider myself a top 1 to 200 player in the world, which is like the top 0.1% of players in the world. And the fact is, is that non-stop in the comment section, I hear tons of comments being like, you're not even in the top 10,000 in the world. Um, I've only been playing the game two weeks and I can beat you. And is there any merit to that? Maybe, if this is two days ago. So, as you guys know, I have not been playing this game very much. I've been really sick, busy with exams. So, today, well, last night and today, I decided to play nine or ten warm up games before the tournament. Unbeaten. Felt like I'd put together a really, really nice squad right here. Is the squad that I was using. I felt like we could match up to absolutely anybody. And honestly, um you guys in the comment section all of it most of the comments were saying that this was a terrible team that there was no chance of me getting top 100 that i'd lose my first game with this team that i had no chance and yeah as you can see by the title of this video and from right here i managed to finish 47th in the world and not only that with a score of 2258 if you guys look at the other weeks week one fourth place was 2685 and I'm gonna show you guys the final, the final scores for week one of these qualifiers. The point system was the same, but it just shows how many more sweats there were this time around. So I would have finished in eighth or ninth place week one with this score. I would have been in ninth place. So fair play to the 46 other players that beat me, but like this is one of those things, I just happened to do it on a really, really difficult week on a week where uh, all the sweats were out because it was their last chance. But if I had have put out a similar performance to this, I would have been in the top 10 players in the world. And it was the exact same in week two and three. I would have been top 10 all three of those weeks. So I am so, so happy with my performance. Not only that, I managed to come up against the best player in Europe and managed to get the win. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Now let's get on to the games. So anyway, game number one, we came up against a kind of weak squad right here, has a couple of good players, but overall not great, and one major weakness, which was Zach Levine, which we tried to expose early. We played a lot of turbo ball early in this game, and we were just basically playing to whoever offense is Zach Levine, and whoever Zach Levine was guarding was just destroying this guy early in the game. But unfortunately, as you guys can see later on in this game, we weren't really able to pull pull away much. And honestly, one of the things that I was trying to do in this um, game, like not something that I really am proud of doing, I was literally on the mic trying to get people to quit games because um, it was the only chance. Like it is the only chance of doing anything in this tournament. And obviously by the title, I didn't finish top four. Um, honestly, if this was any other game week, but my point total, as I said, I just was a little bit of luck needed away from finishing top four, but this week was a different animal. Like I would have needed probably five, I think five more rage quits. Yeah, probably five more early rage quits would have put me in contention, but that still would only put me around the 3000. Like I would have needed most games to be first quarter rage quits, which is kind of crazy. Like you would have needed five rage quits for every game that was finished. But uh, yeah, like this is a really comfortable win right here. 24 point win and it's crazy like a 24 point win normally that will put you around like 50th 60th in the world in previous weeks there that put me 521st a 24 point blowout win and yeah so early this game we're playing it's a terrible opponent and we also play in superman which is paul pierce like i'm showing you guys these clips and it's not like paul pierce is missing he hit every he shot 100 for three uh, through nearly the first half while obviously these were open shots and were good looks i was thinking oh my god this guy's unbelievable pierce then i realized every time he caught the ball pierce he was just running out to the three-point line and he was just shooting no matter what but he was still hitting everything hitting contested leaners hitting everything but in the end we managed to get a little bit of a lead and as soon as we got a bit of a lead we completely clamped up paul pierce and won the game by 47 points so what started off as a close one ended up being an absolute blowout this game right here was a stranger. Like this is by far the best team we'd come up against at this stage. So we went into our defensive settings and um, smother, deny, and um, don't stay attached, front the post, pre-rotate, and just try to get as many steals as possible. And also gap on the post players. 
so that um, they're kind of forced to run through their center. Like this type of defense really did not work in one of our games later in the day when someone was like, ran everything through their center. So it was a little bit of a, a little bit pointless, but it works nine times out of 10. We started off the game hitting a snatch back three and early on in the game, this guy could not get a shot off. Like I know he has four points, but like they were second chance points. He could not get an easy shot off. And then we go and kick to Jason Terry in the corner and he makes an 11 point game. And fair play, like this guy knew he stood no chance. And unlike the guys who have obviously just started off the game with the really weak teams, this guy was like, look, I'm screwed. Let's just back it. So this game right here, we are playing against a team that, again, we can play whoever offense on Zach Levine, which is what we did for the game. We could get, we got everything at will in this game, but this is the game where the defense didn't work. And it was, I ran the defense again, but it was the last time I've ever ran against Yao. So like I'm giving Yao a little bit of space. Like these are terrible shots. I mean, sorry, these are terrible shots to give up. They're great shots for him. But most players are really hesitant with their center. And this guy wanted to run everything through Yao. So I was kind of like, okay, what do I do? Um, a big three there. Like he was way up. And then a big three there from Andrea Bargnani, who actually ended up being my second best player on this team, to be honest. Um, through this whole weekend or through this whole day. Um, put us back in within touching distance. And I don't know. I used Aiton and... What's his name? Aiden and Turner a lot more in this game than I would in other games. But the reason for that was is that we just need to deal with Yao. But from here on out, we actually went on a little bit of a run. So first of all, Vince Carter goes and makes a layup to make it a one point game. So this is the closest we've been. We've been one point a few times. But we had not taken the lead. But as the game went on, we did a much, much better job of almost denying the ball into Yao. Like I know like I didn't play good defense there, but we gotten a couple of steals in a row on Yao. And then we go down and hit two three pointers in a row right there. A big dunk there by Vince Carter. He was expecting me to kick to Miles Turner. And again, he expected to kick the Turner and a good layup from Jason Terry to make it a six point game. And it becomes a free throw shooting contest. And I'm not gonna miss free throws as my team. So an easy win. We are now 162nd in the world. So we're not in a good position. So this is the game right here. This is the game that there's already a video about playing as Yurik 111. And I didn't notice this. I am typed in his name and it came up on a video last year. I actually played against this guy at the very start of last year in the 250k tournament. He was like the very first person in Europe to have Will Chamberlain. And it was like two or three days after Ambush got him. And I played against him using Jar, um, Jar, Jar Jeffries. And Jar Jeffries had like 45 points and I lost by like two in overtime using like emeralds, golds, and I had Isaac Bonga bronze playing against his like ultimate god squad with um, Will Chamberlain. So that was a bit funny, but obviously he's this guy here has qualified twice. Like as you guys saw from the picture at the start of the video, you can rewind if you want. This guy qualified week one, he was fourth. This guy was third, I think in week two. So this guy is legit like seen as the best player in Europe. So I came into this game thinking I am screwed. Like I was just like, okay, let's keep this as close as possible, especially because I got hockeyed in a game yesterday. And to be fair, my team was very weak yesterday. Um, I just realized the difference Lamar Odom and Danny Granger make into the team. And also getting used to using Andrea Bargnani is a huge, huge benefit because he came up huge. So we actually managed to get a little bit of a lead in this game. And I was a bit shocked because the way he was playing me, I was like, okay, he's kind of playing me like I'm a scrub. Like he was playing high on every screen. So, and he didn't really adjust much. So as you guys can see, I was pretending to go over the screens and attacking baseline. I was doing that an awful lot. This time here, he actually didn't go um, go high off it. That was in the very few times in the game, but I played patient. I played a really good patient game right here. Passed the ball well, didn't turn the ball over much. And a big, big shot right there from Andrea Bargnani to make it, give us the lead. And as the game went on, we went in, we got in control. Like this guy is better than me at the game, but he was trying everything. He was trying zones. He needed scores and scores quick. So what he was doing was he was trying to trap me. He was trying to zone me up. He was trying to do whatever he could. So what did I do? If you watch the video, I just dribbled the air out of the ball and then blew by his players. Like he wasn't able to stop Giannis in this game. And in the end, it was a 13 point win and a fantastic performance there by Giannis and also Bargnani had a good game as well. But at this stage, we're now 187 in the world. We actually lost a couple of spots. This game right here, we're playing against not a great opponent team-wise. The start of the game was just really messy. It was like, I didn't know what was going on. And I paused the game to try to change my defense. He's gone. So 125th in the world after two rage quits, which I was kind of shocked. Like 
if this was other weeks, I would have been like 20th after two rage quits and a couple of blowouts and one close game. So this game here is against another absolute god squad. And this game right here, this is was the craziest, craziest game. So to start off the game, we were terrible. Like this guy right here, he had my number. He had Porzingis. Like J.R. Smith's more expensive than my entire team. I'm pretty sure Porzingis is as expensive as my entire team. Like if you take out Vince Carter, Porzingis is more expensive than my entire team. So it's like, yeah, I have a big disadvantage here. So we start off down seven points. I'm thinking, okay, if this guy really pulls away, I'm gonna just quit the game because there's no point in playing a game to lose because all that does is harm the other player. So we got a nice switch right there. And we're, again, we're still playing nice patient offense and we're getting more warm as the, or it's a hard thing to say, but we're getting my eye into it. So I haven't played much of this game, but this was the Andrea Bargnani game. Like this was nuts. Like Andrea Bargnani. I've never seen anything like him in this game. As you guys can see, halfway through the third quarter, we're now up by 37. We're by 37 points in the fourth. Or 36, sorry. We're by 39, and Andrea Bargnani is 39 points. We managed to beat, a, play a god squad and win by 40 after being like neck and neck through the first quarter. I'm being down. Andrea Bargnani, not only scoring, had four rebounds, three assists, two steals, two rebounds, two blocks. It was ridiculous. We're now only 110th in the world after a 40 point blowout. We're playing another god squad right here. And I'm thinking, okay, there's not much I can do against a squad like this, but this guy decided to play zone. And my eye was in it. My eye was in it, that's all I'm gonna say. I was playing enough of this game. The last couple of days, I have not been releasing the ball well because I just have not been playing 2K. I've been playing like one game a day, one game every second day. And this is off the back of maybe 14, 15 games in the past 24 hours. And it was just a complete, just carnage. A complete takeover by this team. This guy did not know what to do. We were getting our baits. We were getting stops and defense. And this guy, like this guy, I can guarantee you is a good player. His team is elite. He actually hit a couple of shots with no meter on. But the thing was, he couldn't deal with the bait. And he also was very, very like stubborn with his zone and wouldn't go out of it. So we're now 87, broke into top 100, I think for the first time with about an hour and a half to go. So this game right here, we're playing a really weak team and we started off so badly. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's my starting five. He's my starting five and I put them on at the end, dominated. I think it's just, I start off games badly. So early on here, we still just turbo buy him uh, with Vince Carter. We did that the whole game and it worked well, but we were just kind of like, that was our first lead of the game. We were selling a lot of jump shots and I don't know. I just felt like this was a weird one because I felt like I was trying too hard an awful lot of the time. I was trying too hard to force early rage quits. And for that reason, I just wasn't playing good 2K. So that was a little bit of a problem. Like I was, again, I was making mistake after mistake after mistake because I was trying almost too hard to get an early lead. And I ended up build, digging myself a hole early. But to be fair, we did end the first quarter really well. A three pointer right there and at this stage, I'm like, okay, I'm up four. This guy's team is nowhere near as good as mine. Although we did have Kyle Lowry off his bench, who is pretty good. But as soon as I realized I got the seven point lead, it was I knew it was game over. Dr. J gets the dunk and we now have a 18 point lead. And this is the time he decides to rage quit. So fair play to him, at least he rage quit. That put me in a better position than if he'd stalled out that game and would have lost by like 40, 50. So we're now in 69th place. We're in our highest position of the day with about an hour and 27 minutes to go. We are like in no, like at this stage, an hour and 27 minutes to go is enough points to, uh, well, it's more points than me anyway. So this guy right here is a really, really weak team. And like, it's just, like you just know against a guy like this, it is going to be a blowout. Although I'm pretty sure I played really, really badly to start this game. Like that's a kind of a common occurrence with this video is that I did not have the best starts to games. So I guess you guys can see even four, two down after a minute, only scoring two points. I was just kind of so, like, again, a shot like that. I was trying to score. I was trying to go for the home run play rather than just go two points at a time. And, like, halfway through the second quarter, we were actually down by six points, which is nuts. But, again, we did manage to make a comeback quite quick. And after a couple of offenses, a wide open shot there by Andrea Bargnani made it, gave us the lead. But still, into the third quarter, this game was tight. Like, I knew I was going to win. Like, there was no chance of me losing this game. All I had to do was just focus a little bit, and this was game over. But this guy just kept it close. He didn't give me anything easy, but eventually we did start to pull away. 
And funnily enough, this became a really big blowout. Like a 29, I think it was a 32 points the game ended up as. And the reason why I kept scoring was every point counts. And again, I wanted, my goal originally was top 20. And I was like, no matter what, I was not, I was not leaving without top 50. Like I was not, like I was, would have been so annoyed if I'd not gotten top 50. So luckily enough, I got 47th in the end. We ended up at 65th here. This squad right here, I have a couple of good players. Like Eddie Johnson's good, um, but that's re I don't know, that's like really it. Like he was running a free agent card in the tournament. So this guy actually, um, he was going AFK at some one stage, a little bit after this. So he just stopped playing. He was like getting called for five second violations. And it was like, he was playing AFK like by inbounding the ball. And he kind of like dribbled to the half. He just inbounded the ball and be called for eight seconds. So it was like, all right, I guess. So he was obviously doing something else. So I literally just got on the mic. And I was like, please, please quit. And fair play to him. Got on the bike and he was like, he thought it was better if he stayed in. That's the only reason he didn't quit. And I was like, no, please quit. And he was like, okay, I'll quit. So big thanks if you're watching this. So 63rd in the world here with 51 minutes to go. It'll, very, very It'll be very, very close. I knew it at this stage to get top 50. It would take a couple of rage quits, I felt. And we played against this guy right here. And this was, this was another one that was frustrating. I was like, his team wasn't bad. Like, we matched up quite well to it, but he had a good defensive team. But, again, you, you can tell in the first, like, 45 seconds of playing the majority of your games, if the guy you're playing is any good, and, yeah, this guy wasn't. Like, he was there running at my players, couldn't make layups, couldn't make dunks. He was just timing everything awful. Like, he was, it wasn't even, what, wasn't that I was doing anything good. Like, my timing is in general good, but you gotta throw up a couple of shot fakes. You gotta do something. But this guy was like, he didn't, I don't think he knew how to throw a shot fake. And that was how I was able to completely expose this guy early. But this is one of those ones. I was literally on the mic straight away at this stage. I really wanted that top 50 finish. And I was like, please quit. Please quit. And in the end, we win the game by 39 points. And he managed to stay the entire way. So that was a very, very frustrating game. Um, and I thought definitely at that stage, there was no chance. Like absolutely no chance of us managing to get into the top 50 63rd place i'm pretty sure that's the same place so this game right here was the most frustrating one because this was about there was 25 minutes to go when i got into this game so it was it was like on the it was very very tight between um me being able to get another game and not get another game so this guy right here was one of the worst players i've ever played and the thing is is that he was on the mic to me first being like you're not good at the game. You just spend a load of money on VC. So I was literally just like, yeah, I don't, I don't spend VC. And he was like, oh no, you have to spend VC to get that team. And I was like, oh no, um, watch the no money spend series by DBG on YouTube to uh, figure out how to get this, how I got this team with no, without spending any money on VC. But uh, yeah, so pretty much I was plugging the channel. But this guy was like, he was pause cheesing me the whole game. He was talk, like he, he lost the game by 50 and he was talking trash. Like it was just so, so annoying. But luckily, we had about two minutes spare um, before the last game. So we're in 53rd place right here. And I was kind of, I was, I was just hoping to break into the top 50. Because if anything, like, like I know for the non-comp players, like this was a game, like look, I win this game. It's it's obvious, you know. So I'm just going to show you guys the highlights. But for non-comp, for comp players, like top 50 means nothing. You're looking for 250k. But just in terms of like achievement, for a sense of achievement, being able to say like, this tournament, last year, one million players played. Because there were 16 game weeks, and this week, this year, there's only four. I'm guessing, over all the game weeks, I'm guessing probably, at some stage, entering the tournament, was probably half a million at least. To say that I managed to finish top 100 week one, got lagged out of week two, wasn't able to do uh, game day three, and then the other game day finishing in the top 50. Like, that is, for me anyway, for just someone who plays the game for enjoyment more than anything that isn't look to make money out of actually being a competitive player being able to say look i'm in the best 50 players in the world at something is something that is a absolutely massive massive achievement so there's a bit of nerves after this to see where my finishing position was but to be fair we went four hours without losing a game i managed to have a really good game day and luckily enough finished in the top 50. so anyway that is the video these are all the games. Obviously, I finished 47th in the world. And who says you need all these god player, godlike players to do well? I'm using 
not a god squad by any means, and managed to finish in the top 50 players in the world, and thousands, and th like, genuinely, I'd say there's about 10, 15,000 people that entered, managed to finish in the top 50, and unlucky it was the week of all the sweats, because it wasn't. Who knows, I could have finished, if I had managed to do this in the last qualifier, if I wasn't in England for it, if I didn't get disconnected in qualifier number two, and I got a little bit more lucky, who knows? Maybe what I'm saying is actually true. That if I got very, very lucky, I was in with a chance of getting into one of those top four spots on any given week. But, uh, yeah, at least I've, I've backed up what I've been saying in this video. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.